welcome back to the channel guys and welcome to all my new followers in this week's episode i thought i'd give a little bit of a tutorial for those who are new with flash and might be a little bit intimidated by you know maybe a manual flash and you shouldn't be because it's all really simple now most of us if not all you know got a little hand-me-down flash from either your parents or your grandparents or you bought something at a flea market thinking that you're going to use it but you're a little intimidated by it because ooh, it's flash but you shouldn't be now most old flashes they're going to have a little bit of a scale on the back and that scale is all you need that scale indicates at what iso level and this yeah, older flash obviously only goes from ISO 12 to ISO 400, but it's going to give you an f-stop, an aperture value, at a given distance. And this scale gives you both feet and meters. Um, yeah, me as a European, <laughs> I'm a metric guy, but um, either way, most flashes are going to give you either feet or meters. So today I've taken a few portraits of Jamie in order to demonstrate how easy it really is to use manual flash without even a light meter or anything else. Now, a flash is going to have, any flash is going to have a guide number. A guide number is nothing more than how powerful the flash is at a certain ISO you know how far does that flash reach most guide numbers are inflated due to marketing all manufacturers do that so it's comfortable to take a stop off that guide number so for instance if at iso 400 i am about 10 meters away i should be shooting at f4 you can make this into you know an f2.8 because, yeah, you can take a stop off. The guide numbers are usually inflated. But, yeah, this skill, it goes up and down, you know, in order to give you um, different values. Let's say that you're shooting at, um, you know, you're shooting at an F100. It makes it really simple. You just put that little arrow at the 100. And then it gives you... Um, yeah, your values at a given distance. So, for instance, but since we're shooting XP2 Super, you know, which is 400. So we're going to put it at 400 ISO. Put that there. And I've taken two portraits of Jamie. One with out the bounce diffuser and one with. The first one is without the bounce diffuser. Now, there are several ways, of course, to mitigate the f-stop, because the first portrait was taken at two and a half meters, and, you know, at f400, at two and a half meters, you know, we're looking at f11. So, you know, because we're losing a stop, so F11. And so um, that's not an F stop that I like to work on. So there's two ways to mitigate this. We're either going to use this little uh, bouncer or since, you know, take note, this skill indicates the distance between the subject and the flash, not per se between the camera and the flash. If it's on camera, of course, if you're mounting the flash on the camera, then yes. But if we're mounting the camera off the flash, we can go a little bit further, you know, let's say to um, seven meters. And now we can shoot at f5.6 or 10 meters, somewhere eight meters, eight to 10 meters. We can shoot at f4. Um, that's how you can mitigate the f-stop that you get because you know a flash like this is somewhat limited 
that's why they started coming out with auto flashes and ITTL and all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to worry about the distances, variable output flashes, stuff like that. But it's still fun to kind of experiment and to kind of mitigate this. Um, you could mount the camera off flash, you know, put it further away and then use the f-stop that you want. Or you can use something like this bounce diffuser, you know, it takes another stop away. And therefore now I can, you know, the second portrait, this portrait, I took it at f8 because I'm losing yet another stop, which is a more manageable aperture to work with. And so that's really, you know, how these manual flashes work. Don't let them intimidate you. Just look at the scale. You know, there is an ISO level or ASA, American Standards Association, which it used to be. Then it got adopted to the International Association for Standardization, ISO. But it's essentially the same thing. You just look at, you know, what film do I have loaded? I like to work with more of a 100 speed film when I'm doing flash versus 400. 400 speed films obviously are going to pick up a bit more light. That could be handy sometimes. You have to make that decision whether or not that's something for you. But I usually shoot around 100 ISO. That gives me more manageable aperture values. But anyway, today we're shooting with XP2 Super. You know, in the second portrait, F8. You know, another way to mitigate, of course, the distances is to use an, a more of a telephoto when you're shooting with a 400 speed film, which I used for these portraits, the um, 85 millimeter that gives me a, a bit more distance. And I, yeah, I don't have to use a, such small apertures that um, we're in the territory of diffraction. So... And it gives me just a bit more distance in between the subject, i.e. my girlfriend and um, the flash. And that's another way to mitigate it. You could use a 135, you know, or even anything beyond that if you're comfortable using that. But I, I don't usually use anything past 85. But it's one way to also mitigate the f-stops uh, where you're a little bit more limited in what you can use. So, yeah, guys, that was my really quick and little um, tutorial on how to use a manual flash. Don't be afraid. You know, I mean, come on, a 35 millimeter, um, I mean, 35 millimeter film is not that expensive. Experiment a little bit, you know, shoot up a whole roll, take notes. That's very important. And you will learn flash in a New York heartbeat. Guys, I love you. I hope you learned something from it. And I'll see you in the next episode.